Good evening to all that are with us today. Gwendolyn Bravo-Subita is uh, saying hi to you. I'm a CS coordinator and on behalf of uh, Daisy Corrales Diaz, our director, we welcome you all to this web webinar that has uh, for objective to present the document, the construction the building of an agenda for the prevention of occupational risk in the Americas in the context of the CIS anniversary and also the number 61 uh, anniversary of the CAPRT. I'm going to uh, give the floor to the coordinator, the specialist, Dr. Javier Garcia Rivas, who is doc doctor in public health uh, by the University of California, Irving Campus in the US. He holds a master's degree in organizational psychology by the Autonomous University of Morelos, Mexico. He's a graduate student at the University of uh, California, UCLA. He has been a professor at the University of San Andrés de Porres in Peru, University of California, USA, the Autonomous University of Morelos. Mexico, and in CETIS uh, University Mexicali in Mexico. He has more than 10 years of experience as a researcher on occupational health, and he has uh, more than 20 publications, including indexed scientific journals, book chapters, and specialized texts. He has been speaker at uh, international events and consultant on psychosocial risk factors at work. He is currently a specialist on the Commission on Occupational Risk Prevention, for the Inter-American Center for Social Security Studies. I, I welcome you all. I thank uh, your assistant, particularly to Dr. Claudio, who will uh, present uh, the document. Also to Dr. Irma Juarez, who will comment uh, this text and all the ones who are uh, connected. Thank you very much, Dr. Abravo. Uh, I, I would like to welcome all that are with, uh, with us today, organized by the American uh, Commission on Occupational Risk Prevention of 2022. Uh, uh, on behalf of Dr. Uh, uh, Daisy Corrales, uh, we, we welcome you, as well as our, uh, our uh, president, uh, Graciela Gil Montalvo. On behalf of her, uh, the Secretary uh, uh, Technic, Dr. Patricia Redondo will be with us. This is a year for the commission. Uh, this is a year, a transition year for the commission, American Commission of Risk Prevention. During these three years, it has been marked by challenges such as the pandemic that we already know. But I think that after this, this commission and this management is the first one who hasn't been uh, had the opportunity to have a presidential meeting. Nevertheless, by the management of Dr. Hill and all these the members of the commission, including Dr. Patricia Redondo, we have been able to arrive to this third year with. Uh, uh, publication uh, and knowledge diffusion that is given by the work of these webinars. Today is not, no exception. We are gathering these two events uh, for the commission by this uh, document that Dr. Uh, Claudio San Juan will be presenting to us. And we are uh, making diffusion of this uh, information uh, through these webinars. In this uh, document, Dr. Aníbal shares uh, this, uh, the trajectory of uh, more than 61 years of work at this commission, but also leave us a reflection moment for the coming years in the, in the topics of uh, risk prevention at work. I'm going to give the floor doc to Dr. Patricia Redonda. Technical Secretary of the American uh, Prevention uh, Commission on Occupational Risk. Dr. Redondo 
She has a bachelor degree in medicine and surgery by the University of Costa Rica. She's a medical specialist on occupational medicine and has a master in occupational health and safety uh, at health and work at the Autonomous University of Madrid. She works uh, currently as head of the occupational health area of the Costa Rican uh, Social Security Fund. She has taught uh, at the university level for more than 20 years, and she's the technical secretary of the American Commission. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you here, doctor. With us, I give you the floor. Thank you very much. And I would like to welcome all the people that are uh, today with us in this webinar. As uh, Dr. Garcia was saying, in this management, we have to, ha to adapt uh, to virtuality, but that hasn't uh, prevented us to work at this commission and in which in this past three years, we have been very active. But uh, before I would like to thank Dr. San Juan for the excellent work that is going to present to us now. Uh, because it's a very useful tool for the future work of this commission. This commission has a subject, uh, main objective to consolidate a preventive culture in the health and safety at work of the member countries of the Inter-American uh, Conference by research, teaching, training, and assistant uh, training. So this is what we have been doing. A lot of research, for example. We have to face uh, the pandemic uh, just as we enter. So we have to learn all that was related with risk prevention in this context. And we try to, to bring to all the members all this learning that we have been consolidating, all the research that the, that the commission was uh, doing in this field. We have uh, make emphasis on the psychosocial risks, for example, on telework. We haven't uh, leave aside the 2030 agenda, also the well-being of workers, but also something very important to point out is to reach the well-being and mental health in, of workers through good practices. And this is very important. And I would like to invite all the member countries to support this commission. So when we, when we ask for some information or we invite you to participate in any activity, please come and participate with us. Let's make growth this, uh, the work that he's been doing in this commission. One of the main challenges of this uh, management that is almost uh, done is the creation of a microsite to which I would like to invite you to incorporate, to read the, the, the text, uh, all the all the uh, research and training spaces that we have been creating, the podcasts, the very with topics uh, related to our commission, and those who are professional in the field, we always need this refreshment of all the new knowledge in order to build an um, an Amer a better America in the field of. Uh, uh, safe and healthy at work. So I'm going. So in order to give a floor to Doctor, uh, we would like. I would like to to just stay to work together. Let's share our experiences in this field, in the new practices, uh, the new work practices for all the workers of all the country, member countries of this co American Commission on health and work prevention. 
I would like to thank you. I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Javier, all the such important work uh, that he has been doing. And I leave you with the main, uh, the main issue of this uh, webinar. Dr. San Juan, thank you very much. Thank you very much, doctor, for your words. Totally agree with you and with the invitation that you are making for all the member countries to know all the work that we have been doing. So we are going to share in the, sh in the chat the link where you where we are going to share the document that Dr. Uh, San Juan is going to present to you. I'm going to, I'm going to present Dr. Uh, San Juan. Dr. San Juan, he's a, a frequent guest of this commission because he's an active member of the activities that we are doing. This document particularly as Dr. Redondo was saying, is very important, is very significant for the work that we are doing from this commission. So Dr. San Juan is member of the Euro Latin American Network for the Analysis of Labor and Trade Unionism. He's coordinator of the thematic access of health and safety at work. He's a senior professional of the superintendents of labor risk at the Minister of Labor, Employment and Social Security in Argentina since 2001. He, is, uh, he holds a degree in occupational health and safety by Moron University, uh, a master in labor law and international labor relations by the Teresa Ferrero National University. He's a specialist in occupational uh, health and safety at a Latin American level accredited by LSE since 2016. He's magister also in human rights and society also by the Tres de Febrero National University. He's certified in the Academy on Compliance with Standards in the Workplace Through Labor uh, Inspection by ILO. He's a full-time professor on the subject professional licensing practice of the career hire technician in hygiene and safety at work at the Institute uh, Superior October, former associate professor of the subject professional practice in the BA degree career in hygiene and safety at work at the Faculty of Informatics and Special Techniques of the University of Moron. And he has been a former rector of the Higher uh, School of Safety and Hygiene at Work. He's related to the American Commission on Occupational Risk Prevention since 2005. So it's a pleasure and an honor to have you here with us. And I will give you the floor to listen to your presentation, the presentation of the document. Thank you very much, Javier. I'm going to present this document that, is, that basically is an analysis of what, what has been done the 60 years of, uh, of the, this commission and what, what was the framework of uh, the, the, the organization of this commission and how do we arrive to this uh, next anniversary and what is going to happen in the future. First of all, I'm going to try to make it easy in the presentation. And the well, I, to thank, I have a, an endless list of, to thank all the collaboration and the aid that you have been doing, especially to Dr. Daisy Corrales Diaz and the Vice President of the Commission, Patricia Redondo Escalante, Dr. Irma uh, Juarez, and my friend, Javier Garcia Rivas. A uh, special acknowledge to Guadalupe Victoria Sam Zamora, who is uh, the manager of uh, physical and digital documentary information services of CS. Of course, I also thank Dr. Maria Tercera Gonzalez Nara, 
to Dr. Gwendolyn González. And to my friend, Graciela Giel. I don't know. A special thank also, and a, a great acknowledgement to the additional edition editors of CS. So in these 30 minutes, we would like to tell the main motivation for preparing the document and to point out some milestone, milestones on prevention uh, in these decades. So once I feel motivated to write, and sometimes uh, I was feeling that the documents were there uh, waiting to be uh, guarded like a treasure. I can assure you that I read all the things that uh, came to me. So perhaps by chance, in one of the readings of the CS library, just before the pandemic, uh, it arrived to my email, the bibliographic bulletin number 11, where I found a resume of the first meeting of the American Regional Commission for the Prevention of Occupational Risks, the CAPRT. So it, for me, it was very important to find this document and that someone uh, was interested to digitalize this document. At, uh, the colleague Guadalupe and its collaborators. What, uh, what I really was important for me is that the bulletin was uh, stated the, by, uh, the, the words by Dr. Juan Manuel uh, that uh, at that time he was the president of the Argentine Society on Occupational Medicine. And that uh, years later in 1984, I met him uh, when he was re our rector in the Superior uh, School of Safety and Industrial Hygiene of the Argentine Institute of Safety. That was for me my motivation to, that led me to write Because as one poet say, uh, that uh, the dominant uh, people say that uh, history is not, um, does not exist. I'm sorry of the paraphrase. So I found this uh, document uh, that told us the history that started in 1961. And it was really delightful to see what was going on at this time. The the, the first thing that uh, was important for me was this phrase where there is a paradox. So for, for while on the one hand, working environments are improved and machines are increasingly safer. On the other hand, we have an insecure human factor. This idea is nowadays an object of discussion. Someone say that is not true. Someone that it is, uh, it is true. Someone is that you can correct it or it's a human factor. We have found uh, some other writers that led us to, uh, to to know the causes, but it indeed it is important and interesting because nowadays it's it has we have a priority on this, and this has been in our mind since 1961. Because what was the main point that led us to write and gather this information? The first thing we found a, a thread of all the meetings. Uh, especially, especially the, the the 
the meetings because the congresses were not uh, every time, but the meetings they were. Another common thread, it, it was that in each three annual uh, meeting, uh, there is a presentation of what has been done uh, in this the past three years and what is go uh, and the, the future actions. Then the conclusions and recommendation on priority sectors in each decade to present in order to present the uh, solutions after what Pat Dr. Patricia Dondo was saying, that was the good practices of the countries that, has that had leadership in this area. And all the sectors, for example, the agriculture, mines, all, et cetera. More than one time that I was gathering information and reading it, I, I asked myself, is it all written? There were some missions that were appearing already and that were consistent throughout the compilation of the documents of the American Commission on Occupational Risk Prevention, uh, we thought I read it or heard it somewhere, I thought. Uh, therefore, this whole heritage contribute to rethinking the sequence for a new order uh, to advance on priorities that will allow us to make us progress in prevention. I'm going to make I'm going to make a brief commentary. But it's uh, all the things that I've live, been living since I am linked with this American Commission on Occupational Risk Prevention. The first one was in 2005 where through the 21st General Assembly of the Inter-American Conference on Social Security, Security at Mar del Plata, I had to make a document, I had to, to comment a document on a worker participation in occupational health and safety in Argentina. This document had to update the last one I had the opportunity to present it in this virtual seminary that CS organized. Another milestone that I lived, but and it was very important for me, was the uh, risk pre uh, the prevention uh, strategic planning meeting that was held in Argentina as well in 2017. Where we stayed uh, to the seas to have a new uh, path. I was interested in following, on making the following up. And I, I was uh, following up, the, I was making the following up of this document until the pandemic reaches. So the milestones that I'm going to, to highlight would be the, the, those that are between the creation of SIS in 1942 and the first meeting of the American Commission on Occupational Risk Prevention in 1961. I, I give you in my presentation some numbers, uh, but for a first reflection, by that time, uh, there was not, not that much done. We have the 1919 19, uh, Philadelphia meeting that was engaged with the safety of the workers. But by that time, we have five ILO convention and 12 recommendations. Two of these instruments, uh, the first one was the uh, number 31. And the second one, was the recommendation and the 97 recommendation that is still update. And it was 
together with the standard regulation on safety in industrial establishments in 1960. It's uh, had been updated uh, in 1966 and 1969. Uh, so in the commission development, I'm going to make some, I'm going to highlight as well some milestones. I, I think that they are important. The first meeting, for example, in 1961, if you read the objective of the meeting, what was the development uh, that was reached in the Americas? What was the statistic in work health prevention? And, was, and what was the, the world situation on safety and health at work? So when, when you think at these topic, three topics, so you think with these colleagues, So they, they, they were like a very vanguardist because they, they were really modern by that time. Or we lack of uh, updating. I know that we have advanced and the, the, the development is not the same. We, For example, the statistic topic, we, don't, we still don't have a, a place where we can compare all the statistics and what is the development of each country. But for example, for agro agriculture, we have the case of the 184 uh, agreement of 2000, the year 2000 that hasn't been ratified to any country, by any country. That doesn't mean that it is not important but it, it, but it is indeed something that we have to consider. In the next decade, in the 70s, I hope I, I don't repeat it, but in the 70s, it's like a, it's, 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 it's a moment where you can see a new trend coming that that ILO uh, president uh, promotes after its uh, memories are called for a more human work. That's a standpoint that arises from uh, to up to our day. And is a, a concept of uh, work conditions and environment where uh, he states that there is a, a factor that at the workplace that impacts the health of the workers. Uh, but there are also uh, other uh, factors such as economy and work rhythm, the well-being politics, etc. All of this uh, that is narrated at the book Introduction to CIMAT. It's a very, very passionate topic. I recommend to, to read this uh, article. Another very important year, linked to another actor uh, that has its prevention concept is in the 80s. The presentation that Brené Mendes uh, did, a Brazilian colleague, where he presented the, the the, the, the work, uh, the occupational health, a priority area. And he make a, a, a focus on the health services that according to the, the countries, they are known as uh, occupational medicine services and other like hygiene and safety and wall uh, at work. In this document is where they start to present all the results, all the, uh, the, the measurements or the, uh, that they are implements of the uh, program of uh, implementation of um, to improve the, the workplace. In those years, in the 80s, the meetings uh, keep going on and the eighth uh, Congress 
is done and in the framework of CIMAT, uh, the first international forum uh, is presented in 1988. Another important topic uh, in the 90s is the free trade agreements and regional integration processes or the, the two things according to the country. In, in Argentina, this, this decade uh, uh, go uh, from the 16th meeting in 1999 to the ninth Congress in 1992. That's where we focused in the topic, in the famous topic of the humanization of work, but also comes the health and safety at work. How does start? They start to appear uh, several mechanisms of, for prevention from the EU, the European Union, or the free trade agreements of Mexico and uh, the US and Canada. So that is a milestone that makes a, a big impulse, especially to the comparative studies at the region. For the 2000 years, uh, I, I point out this uh, coming out of neoliberalism, neoliberalism, which is quite relative because there have been a surf of experience in the region. And some milestones are going to uh, high, be highlighted. ILO is going to mark a global strategy uh, for a new uh, focus, regulatory focus. Also, through the 16 regional American meeting, it's going to be state a regional agenda of health and safety at work. And to, in the years 2010, all this impulse that ILO is uh, promoting in the concept of uh, global strategy, uh, they are, uh, promote, are going to promote through the true party dialogue the elaboration of several strategies, the coordinated strategies, the, the, the most important ones are going to be from 2010 and 2019 and 15, uh, in order to elaborate a national politics that such as the ILO was recommending and a program, a prevention program. Uh, the, the last uh, uh, Inter-American Congress is going to be held at 2010. And the technical uh, meetings. To finalize, as I was saying, the, pla the strategic planning area uh, that was um, organized at the pandemic. Uh, so, as, as the roundup, we make um, a compilation of health and safety at work agendas in the Americas. What each country is doing, uh, we make also an epilogue and all the conclusions and proposal, proposals, all the annexes of all the documents that uh, we thought it important to rescue. And finally, uh, we leave a bi uh, bibliography if you want to. To research more. So, as the presenters were saying, more we we are going to uh, present the proposals uh, without prejudice to the contents of the work program of the American Commission, and uh, or those purposes to be achieved in the next period, 20, 20, 2023, 2025 a series of uh, contributions arise. The first one would be the regulatory scenario for occupational health and work, safety and work. So uh, as well, a compilation of stati statistical indicators on safety and health at work,
but not all the countries contribute with its data and less least they they update all this data another point that that dr javier garcia uh, proposed is a topic of psychosocial risk factors in telework because the pandemic hasn't uh, finished but uh, the telework is a uh, in the propositions, and we can still uh, discussing all this uh, related with the psychosocial risk factors. Because and that before the pandemic, we it was not that important. But nowadays, we have to put the the focus on the psychosocial risk factors. Another topic that. This has been pioneer. Is the topic of uh, the occupational safety and health of digital platforms. We have a lot to work in that topic. For the year two thousand, we were thinking of the delivery. Now these issues are linked in another way. So we have to work a lot with this. There has been appearing some legislations and research to learn how, uh, on a, uh, occupational safety at work. Another topic is a follow up of the ILO draft uh, regulatory instruments on biological risks. And it's going to be a subject of the next two conference. It's a very important topic. that and there and since a long time ago there was a delay on on talking of these topics but nowadays it seems really important another topic is uh, the as a, uh, the idea of the dr patricia redondo is a compilation of good practices on occupational safety and health so and that that means to make more than the, the update regulations are asking for us. We have to do more. Important is the good practices beyond the, the agreements. For example, in some countries, the implementation of, the, of some uh, systems, health systems. Uh, so we have, uh, we leave as, a, a, as proposition some other technical cooperation operations. So in the future, what's new? What are we discussing? I'm going to uh, thank again this colleague group that has been collaborating with us. Because in June, it was decided that uh, health, health, safety and work was a, a right. So after that concept, safety and health at work is not only a fundamental right, but also this resolution is a milestone to promote and compromise the countries to fulfill these uh, fundamental rights uh, related to the workers, safety and health at work. Another topic that we are discussing is link occupational safety and health with human rights and promote responsible business practices. We have been starting in the G20. Since 2014. And finally, also to link all these matters through human rights and business plans and programs. So the, uh, such as, as we've been trying to do at Mercosur uh, since 2021. So to finish, uh, thank you very much. And the dedicatory of this publication to two people that were, that had a uh, direct uh, link. The first one, the Eva Perón, 
that was appointed president of the third meeting in the Inter-American Conference on Social Security, where she led his message, there will be no peace in the world until there is a social justice for all the workers. And also for uh, Salvador Allende, a uh, doctor that was very important uh, in the first, uh, in the organization of the first uh, Inter-American Conference on Social Security. He said, he stated, it is necessary to clarify the ideas involving the concept raised on preventive or curative medicine. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, doctor, for your presentation, for the presentation of the document. I We invite to our uh, audience to send your questions for the, the question and uh, answer sessions. We will be listening the commentary on the comment, uh, on the document that uh, Dr. Uh, San Juan is, has just presented. Later to the presentation of Dr. Juarez, we, we will be uh, reading the questions that you are sharing with us. I'm, I'm going to, to read a brief, uh, uh, Curricular summary. Um, she has a PhD in business management by the Postgraduate Center of Mexico State. She has a master uh, degree in occupational health and safety by the Institute of the, for the Development of Occupational Safety and the Ministry of Labor and Social Welfare. She has several diplomas on research and education with an integral approach for occupational health workers, occupational health care, planning and safety at work, as well as senior management in health services care. She, she's a certified, uh, she's certified as a quality auditor in labor competence, instructors in quality management systems and leadership. She has been coordinator for work safety at the Mexican Institute for Social Security IMSS and teacher at the Postgraduate Center for the State of Mexico. Since 2020, she has been the academic coordinator of the Inter-American Center for Social Security Studies. And she's a frequent guest of the, our commission. And it's a pleasure to have you here with us, Dr. Thank you very much, Dr. Garcia. You are very generous. And it's an honor to collaborate with this great family. Uh, I please, I am pleased to participate and I am honored to have this opportunity of uh, greet, greeting the authorities as well as to highlight a congratulation to Dr. Uh, Claudio Niva San Juan who from the Inter-American uh, Conference on Social Security and the Inter-American Center of Social Security Studies. This, uh, uh, we, we would like to grade you for this, uh, uh, this work, this very important work on the work prevention, health prevention at, at work, where all the efforts are uh, highlight of uh, authorities and institutions, as well those authorities at, at an international level interaction are so important. With challenges and efforts, you are giving uh, a lot of uh, information, particularly in this uh, pandemic crisis topic that is uh, such a great challenge for all the work, especially for the emergent uh, economies, as well as the preventionists to give continuity for a world that is right nowadays complex and ambiguous, this to give continuity to productivity in a, for the workers that has specially, special requirements in the factor in the topic of uh, factors of psychosocial risk. History has memory, doctor. So you document the history of the American Commission on Health Prevention at Work. And with this, for this important document, it will be, 
it will remain throughout history as a basis for a prospective planification that nowadays is going to be an absolute requirement to have in this fourth industrial revolution with the human capital capital and with all these special requirements it is necessary to have from um, administration based on evidence uh, decision making and you have had the time to 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 highlight all these requirements and to congregate all the documents. And today you give us uh, this product. If, if you allow to, I have a presentation. So I would like to share this with you. Nowadays, we've, we are gathered In the framework of the 80th anniversary of the Inter-American Conference on Social Security, it's, it's not easy in a pandemic uh, to be celebrating this 80th anniversary and to have this opportunity to celebrate the 61st anniversary of the first meeting of the American Commission for the Prevention Risk Network. It's a real honor to be here with you. We, uh, it's a, an honor to be with you, Dr. Claudio Aníbal San Juan, who, is a, who has a, a long uh, trajectory and professional experience. We are going to make some comments to this work. It's really a wide work, an important work. So I'm going to make some resume. So we will uh, have the background uh, and we have in this document the background of the history of the American Commission on Occupational Risk Prevention that, that was named the, com the Reg American Regional Commission for the Prevention of Occupational Risk. Nowadays, the American Commission on Occupational Risk Prevention, CAPRT, which is very important because this, may, this gives us evidence of uh, the, the history of, of these 61 years for the building of a, a... In this agenda, we can see in the document that was started uh, by a need of a strategic planning of the American Commission for the Prevention of Risk at Work, in which it was very important to tackle uh, by this document the developments in the fields of occupational risk prevention in the, in the countries of uh, America. The use of occupational accident uh, statistic that Dr. Uh, has highlighted the accident statistic uh, for prevention uh, purposes that is a very important element in order to make decision making. And that the commission has been working in this integration of a database, such as a, a, an ele a fundamental element for decision making. To, in order to uh, and prevention of occupational risk, especially in agriculture. The document gives us a, a history line. So I'm going to resume from the 60s. How was the behavior of this commission through this document? The, in, the, in the 60s, there, there was a highlight on the promotion for, of measures to protect the life, health, and integrity of workers. As well, the development of a preventive framework in occupational health in the American countries.
for the 70s, the, 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 the things that was, were highlighted was the implementation of measures in prevention on occupational hazards in the construction industry, the prevention in the manufacture of chemical products, and in the standardization of statistical measures on occupational risk prevention. Thus, the document highlights how was evolution, how, evol how it evolved from the planification to the integration of those databases. And for the 70s, was, it was work on this standardization for all these uh, measurements. In the next decade, in the 80s, we can highlight the, the training of statistical surveillance studies that were uh, more often for the, the risk prevention. That has an evolutive uh, process. As well with the support of the database. It was also, wor they work also in the training on occupational risk prevention guiding the activities according to the recommendation of the ILO. Next one, please. It, it was work as well in the National Occupational Health Plan in the actions and measures to help balance uh, the work and non-working environment, such as the document is referring to us, because we can predispose the uh, professional uh, uh, disease. But in this decade, it studied and integrated all the information of the importance of the causes of these risks in the uh, outside the work environment. Also for the implementation of the OSH legislation in the Andean region. Next, please. In the next decade, in, uh, it's working more with the prevention initiatives in the construction industry, the standardization of criteria for recording accidents and diseases at work in Latin America. For the 20, 2010th, uh, there were enormous uh, great results were achieved for the countries of the region, adopting national health strategies and plans in countries such as Argentina, Brazil, Colombia, Costa Rica, Peru, Spain, at the level of a decree or as a national program, thus resulting the Ibero-American plan. Also in the next decade, it was work, uh, they worked uh, in monitoring of occupational accident and statistical control in occupational risk prevention. It also give a follow up to or monitor the functionality of the Ibero-American OSH strategy 2021-2025 period as well. Uh, the approval and development of the American Commission for the Prevention of Risk at Work in the period 2020-2022 work plan, as well as the Workers' Health Action Plan uh, from 2015 to 2025. So the document also referred to us an important action of all this period that is really wide. And if I'm allowed, from the academic coordination, there has an analysis of the behavior. In the 60s, it was worked more in occupational health, 
according to the document. The gathering of the information with a 37% more in this theme. In the 70s, there has a 38% uh, work, they work more in legislation on risk at work. In the 80s, they highlight with a 28% the capacitation and culture of health and pre prevention. In the 90s, they work more in, uh, at the commission in the training and cul prevention culture and health. For the, 20, for the 2000 decade, with a 48%, uh, they work more in work risk. And in the 2010s, they work more or they highlight more to the training and culture of uh, health prevention. I would like to highlight that by this period, for the last period, 2020-2022, of course, uh, we will have to gather more information for all the work of the impact uh, of uh, telework and all the things that the, the new t technologies and how the the, the, the the all the activities were virtualized and uh, some fundamental element such as the productivity organization and the organizational environment. This has been tackled by different webinars, different we uh, documents, and we will continue with this analysis, this information analysis. We have also, by decade, the behavior of the activities that has been done at the American Commission of Risk Prevention and Work since 1960, uh, uh, that have been guided after year after year by the agreements reached at the meetings with the participation of representative of the member countries. And as, as Dr. Javier said, all these uh, kind of activities by pandemic times have been reversed through different activities that they have to in, be innovated. And they have proved that, for example, telework is uh, such a such still functional. And for example, in the within the countries, uh, the the legislation has been uh, evolving um, by the condition of health at and safety at of the workers. I'm totally sure that everything has a memory, and you are going to leave a legacy, very important legacy, in this commission to the prospective commission uh, planification. Uh, after this pandemic in, in the topic of risk prevention. The next one, please. So to respect the time that I have been marked, I would like to thank Dr. Claudio Aníbal San Juan because he has a great uh, acknowledge because the documental uh, integration and, and research is not easy. It's a very difficult uh, topic that doctor has uh, tackled and take the, t the necessary time to send this product to the Americas and uh, Caribbean region. This, they, they, he delivered this product through the risk prevention in the Americans and the Inter-American Conference on Social Security through the Inter-American Center for Social Security Studies welcomes the valuable contribution of, the, of that document, which through reflective reading 
has allowed, has allowed us to conceive and to know the different evolutionary scenarios of the American Commission of Risk Prevention, contributing in a very important way to document the action and the evolution of that commission until the present time. I congratulate Doctor and all the team because you are giving us a very solid base to, for a better future in risk prevention in the Americas. With this document that we are uh, thanking Dr. Uh, Claudio Nuel San Juan uh, in pro of the workers and humanist uh, organization. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. for your comment. And uh, such a, a, a kind of a, a guideline for, for reading this uh, document. That by the way, we are sharing, that we will be sharing at the microsite. I'm going to share the link of the document that we are uh, presenting to us. And I am going to, to share with you the link of the today webinars. We are going to go to a question and answer session, mainly directed for to uh, Dr. San Juan, if you can help us. I'm going to read each question. Some of them, um, they are reflective, but it's important for, you, for us to give you the, your experience uh, for the uh, historical development that you have given us, not only if, if of the commission, but of the topic of uh, work and risk prevention. They, would you consider that you have effectively advanced in actions for risk prevention at work? Thank you very much, Javier. I don't know if Dr. Irma is there. Doctor, I would like to uh, thank uh, the generosity for your words and for the presentation you have given us. Since uh, from Brenda Escobar in Argentina. I'm going to ask, answer the question. But if I am allowed, I would also like to thank all the friends and colleagues from Argentina and the Americas that are present. I, they are not my family. I have I found a lot of old friends here from Guatemala, from Argentina. Also, there, it is present Milton which he, he said a question, Paula, a lot of colleagues. So the question, I believe that we are better regarding the question. We also have to see the question. We always have to see the context. We of course are uh, better than the first re industrial revolution Practically, uh, children are not working. Practically, women as another protection level that they didn't have at the 19th century or to the beginning of the 20th century. But of course, there are a, a lot of steels that we're still lacking. Another thing that favor us or to know that we are better is the statistical numbers that we have. There was a, a, per, a people, a person that said, the statistics are not to count better the dead ones. The statistics are to know what are the uh, variables that are intervening and how uh, in accidents and how to prevent them. So I believe that in the light of the last uh, novelties, in the past novelties, we should be better. But of course, this varies according to the context. For example, the, the pandemic uh, uh, helps us to understand the importance of prevention, uh, the isolation, the use of uh, masks, for example. We discover the value of risk prevention hierarchy.
even though it is very old, uh, we we think uh, the other way. We start for the personal protection and not by isolation, for example, the risk of transmission in a common place. So I believe, I hope I've been able to answer this question and I, I thank the, uh, the, the question. Thank you very much, doctor. I agree. And precisely as you mentioned, there are a lot of things to do. And the next question is related with this. So, and the question is, what happens with violence and stress uh, at work in Mexico, particularly in Mexico, but we can extend that to all Latin America. Is, uh, is there exist a, a regulation that it seems that what can we be done and how the workers can denounce this kind of violence? Well, without uh, dealing with Mexican uh, internal problems, I believe that there are universal uh, rights and universal problems as well. I know that the, repu the Ministry of Labor has a, uh, an application. I know that there is a new law on telework so, but in general, all the workers can denounce uh, this kind of violence. But the problem is that, for example, in the uh, 190 ILO agreement that is recent, that regulates the prevention of violence and harassment at the workplace, uh, it's important. Because basically we had like three, four uh, risk factors, the economics one, the physical, but nowadays uh, there is one important uh, that is the psychosocial risk, uh, such as the, and in this psychosocial risk, uh, the violence and harassment topics appear. And I believe that all the countries regarding to uh, the, social actors, not only the, the, the government, but the unions, they have to try to stop this violence event for the, 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 the question you have to denounce through the Ministry of Labor, any other matter, you can write to CIS, and Dr. Garcia is going to answer you more thoroughly. Uh, and it's also related to liberal work stress. And it, few countries have some politics for the eradication of work stress. Indeed, doctor, to complement what you are saying, there are mechanisms in several countries, according to the each uh, country legislation, in Mexico, we have a mechanism through the Ministry of Labor or by the 035 uh, regulation that where occupational violence is included. But indeed, it's a, a problem that we have to tackle and we have to face frontly and basically to live, to, to, to be clear that all these work conditions are, are harmful, not only for the workers regarding the physical and the mental, but it's also uh, harmful for the uh, development of the organization. I'm going to read the, the last question that they are sending to us. The next one is, what, which are the priorities on health and safety at work in uh, the American levels? The statistics, health uh, statistic can be improved to reach a uh, significant uh, improvement that are priority for the ILO and WHO. 
such as the pulmonary obstructive uh, diseases, for example. What is the, the next uh, step, the key step that we have? Well, imagine that. So Milton, the four pathologies that you mentioned, the, the group of pathologies that you mentioned are within the regional plan of workout health of the ILO, the PAHO. The, the, the key step that we have to, to do in the Americas is a better interrelation uh, between what the health areas are proposing and the working areas. For example, all the things related to health it's a very strong tendency to work on the non-transmissible uh, diseases. That are really important for the countries for a, a worker or not. For example, cancer, cardiopathies. So what we would be lacking is a better articulation between health and work areas in the majority of the countries that they were up to the circumstances during the pandemic, especially the health ministry, ministries, and the topic of work administration to res in order to respect the, the, the rights of the workers. Those are the priorities that were fixed by the PAHO. For example, the CIS, they have its own priorities that has been mentioned the member countries of the, their executive board. The ILO agenda for America, for the Americas, is contemplating for the regional initiative that they haven't been working in that. So we can link this question with the next uh, question. So the priority agenda for the Americans and on the world especially is as minor asking, it's on the resolution of the, uh, regarding uh, the inclusion of a safe and healthy environment uh, and the link with the principles and rights at work. This fix uh, the next priority before the countries that has ratified the, the agreements, 165 and 187, they had the obligation to fulfill the requisites of these agreements in the national and enterprise level. Now they uh, include all the countries. So what are the implications of fulfilling this uh, regulation and the common agreement in, at the national level to fix a polit uh, national politics with the, um, regarding the work and employers' uh, organizations, design a program, a prevention, a risk prevention program, and to keep it up updated and independent of these two agreements, 155, 187, a tool that it, they, they recommend is a health and safety profile. That is an instrument that allows us to have a diagnose of what is going on in the country and that leads us to see when can we have to update the policies or the national program or any other component of this program. That uh, at a national level. At a company level, what the countries have to do is to legislate or, and keep updated the legislation to, on prevention, on re work risk prevention. For example, 
I'm going. Uh, for example, in Argentina, they have a legislation of uh, that is from 60 years, 50 years ago. So, uh, in the context of the ratification that Argentina made on the 155 and 187 uh, recommendations. At least it is uh, not updated because they don't oblige the participation of uh, workers. So uh, it's a pleasure to have us uh, uh, to have uh, answered this uh, question. And I don't know why you meals on it are not in the preventionist group, because that is another question. We are not waiting for the state to, to tell us what do we do, what would, do we have to do? Through different uh, webs. Uh, we keep updated and we keep informed. Uh, so the interrelationship with, between the colleagues is very, very important. So what is going on in Peru, in Guatemala, in Argentina? So it's been really um, an honor to participate with you, not only to highlight the history of CIS, but also for the amount of documents to analyze, uh, I thank you as well for all the work that you have been doing, Javier, for the presentation of this document. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Aníbal. So we don't have any more questions of our audience. Nevertheless, I just share with you in the chat the link and other uh, the link of the document and other and the other events that we have been having uh, as well as the link where you can find this the document that is present that was presented today so we uh, i thank dr anibal san juan for this very very important contribution that you are doing on this topic on health and safety at work gathering historically uh, what has been done since the American Com Commission on Health uh, Occupational Risk Prevention. We thank also the authorities, the presence of Dr. Patricia Redondo, of course, the commentary of Dr. Irma Juarez. It's been a, a pleasure to be with all of you. We hope, we hope to have the participation of you in our next event. Thank you very much.